In this demonstration, we're going to use Arc Assembler to pick findings, cluster heads, shanks, and change the colours, change uh, the fittings to show how they can all be put together without going into the relief module. Okay, well first of all, we're going to start with um, the assembler itself. So, start a new project. So, the libraries from the assembler, and we're going to choose some libraries now: clusters and rings. So, at the moment, we've uh, only got a few of those clusters in here, but we're going to expand this over the next uh, coming months. So, first of all, I'm going to take a um, plain cluster, small plain cluster here, and we can set in the gem center of gem, the center gem diameter. So, I'm going to say three. That might be a little bit big for this particular uh, demonstration, but at least we can start from here. But this is determining now how big the center diamond is and then scaling everything else accordingly. I'm just going to select a shank size Q. I'm going to tell it that I want it about 3 millimeters wide. OK, that's the head on top of the shank as well. I'll just select a more realistic uh, head for the top of this shank now. Let's go into the... I'm going to hide this one first of all. I'm just going to change the colour before we go any further, just to sort of bring a bit more ambient light onto the subjects when we pick the other items that they'll give the same sort of bright shading. Okay, we'll go to libraries again. I'm going to pick another uh, cluster shape. This is a 10 pointer uh, setting, so I'm just going to accept it as it is at 1.9. You'll see it fits lovely on top of the shank. And you can change those shanks if you wanted to, or change the head or have a bigger head, or have a different type of cluster head. It's entirely up to you, really. OK, what we're going to do is just hide away the shank here. I'm going to bring another shank in from uh, a range of shanks that we have that will fit this width. So there's a little split Tiffany. I'm going to say Q. And we'll make the width about uh, 3 millimeters. So again, nice split shank this time, Tiffany. Nice surface finish. Just sitting underneath the head there. OK, I'm going to um, just change a few things in here now. So you can go to the under bezel and split them apart so you can see how it all is all made up of component parts. So the bezel you can take off and use for other pendants or or, or settings. Uh, the top, uh, this is the basket now, just moving up into position. I'm going to select the uh, head itself. So the head option here, and we'll just move that up above the rest. So all these can be used as pendants and scaled and shaped and sized so you can use them in all different designs whether it's pendant or rings or earrings. And we're trying to break down a lot of the component parts like this now so you can use them and be able to change them around. OK, I'll hide that one away and we'll bring in another um, uh, head. We'll make it a little bit bigger this time. So in here, I'm going to say I want it about 2 millimeters, something like this. And I'll import that in the screen. I'll just hide the first one so it's out of the way. Right mouse click and hide. So this head now is based on a 2 millimeter stone. and Everything else has been side sized accordingly. I'm going to now deal with, break these component parts down again a little bit more and deal with the gems themselves. So I'm going to just right mouse click, select, in, go to the gem file themselves. I'm going to pick the center stone here. I'm going to edit the color so I can identify which stone it is. And I'm going to scale this one now as well, so use the scale buttons. I can probably get away with, I don't know, 150% on this one. So it's uh, 3.16 at the moment. I'm going to size those um, by another 120, say 3.74, 3.79 rather, 3.8 for that centre stone. So I can still get away with that, probably setting it in this in this uh, model. Firstly, I'm going to pick up the gem 4, which is the blue, which is the sapphire now. I'm going to right mouse click and cut that, and I'm going to put it in its own little folder. So it's top assembly, let's say new, right mouse click and say new. And I want to uh, rename this now for uh, centre gem. And I'm going to paste the gem that I've just cut into this folder. It makes it more manageable, really easy to manage. OK, that's the first one done. Then I'm going to go back. I'll just check if we can get a bit more height out of that first of all. That's probably better. And then I'm going to go back to the um, setting itself, the original setting. And I'm going to select uh, one of the diamonds this time. So if we open up, I'll take the first diamond here. I'm going to scale that one up again. Uh, we should be able to get away with 2.5, I think, 2.5 mil. Let's have a look at that one. That's a little bit bigger. 
I just need to deal with that on its own. It's this one where the where the gnomon is on top of it. I'm going to um, just nudge that up and down a little so I can see how much bigger we can get that. Okay, that should be okay. I just need to move that now to the nudge to the right a little so it sits in the middle, and then I'm going to rotate those. So first of all, I'm going to cut it out of here. So right mouse click again. And I'm going to cut and hide. Well, that in the center gem at the bottom, in the center gem here at the bottom, I'm going to make a new folder. So right mouse click, new folder. I'm going to cut. This is the outer gem. I'm going to cut that one and place it in the outer gem. So now it's easier to manage when I want to rotate those items. I'm going to rotate six of them around 360 on the blue, a nest in its own assembly, and then there are all the diamonds at 2.5 this time, so a little bit bigger all the way around. So even though you've made the, the cluster head, you can break those component parts down again. Um, and if you can think you can get away with a bigger diamond in that head, then that's fine. To keep things nice and tight, I'm just going to drag the centre gems now back into the claw, or back into the head, and just keeps it all together now, so it's inside here. And I can scale then the whole thing together with the new uh, gems. So 110% on this one, for instance. So you can still carry on changing the size if necessary. OK, now we can deal with some shanks as well. I'm going to change the, the shank item. Uh, we can select the shank from here if we wanted to, and just scale it. So at the moment this is 3.2. I'm going to scale that to about 4 millimeters. apply, so a much wider shank now. I can go back to the shank and the head, um, or I can bring in a completely new shank altogether if the customer doesn't like it. I'm just going to go back to the libraries again, let's pick a solid Tiffany this time. Again size Q, and I'm going to type in about 2.5 this time. just need to hide the f original one. So there's our new Tiffany style shank. And all these are ready to go for rapid prototype and they can be just sent straight up to the RP service. Uh, they're complete full models. Okay, we can also put in some different types of heads. So for instance we want to put um, a marquee size head. We'll just take the default for now. It'll pop it back into top of the shank for me. I'll just hide the other one so you can see. So fairly simple thing to do. Again, I'll go and pick up a, another um, library item. I'll just hide that out of the way first of all. I'm going to pick up a, a wireframe cluster this time, so half a carrot. 4.2, that'll do. That's now hidden inside here. I'll just hide that first marquee one out of the way. Right mouse click and hide. So we've got a cluster now with a, a Tiffany shank on it. And I can come back out and change that shank again, so if I want uh, more of a sweeping shank that comes underneath, a little bit lower, let's take a shank that we have here, we'll go for um, this one, probably a little solid Tiffany, again 3 millimeters. hide out the original one. Okay, so fairly simple to change really with a 3mm white shank on, and it's all ready to go. I'm just going to change that centre stone again so you can break these down as well, the cluster head. I want to look for the diamonds themselves. So the gems, I'm going to change uh, in, in the information setting, edit the colour. I'll use um, a green. I'll go for an emerald green. Peridot green, and if you want to change that again, just in the information, edit, or we'll use a ruby this time. Now it's also possible to, to change the colour of the setting head here, it's white gold or platinum, we're going to change that now to yellow. So we just go into the history tree here, look for the head itself, look for the component part, so it's the top section here. And then I'm going to go into the uh, material setup, and we're going to change that to 24 karat gold just to match the rest. And now we've got a full yellow gold setting as well. So again, very quickly, we can make quite complex designs just by picking some of the component parts and scaling them, f changing the colours.
fitting the gems on different shanks. And again, all these uh, components, they come, you can break them down into their, their individual parts, like a head, the settings, the basket, and the shank. I'll just choose them from the history tree now, and then nudge them up so you can see them in more detail. So we'll go for the top now. I'll just nudge that uh, down by about two millimeters out of the way. And then we'll take uh, the head, so go to the top, select the model itself, and I'm going to nudge this one up. And you can use these for pendants or earrings or anything else really. Okay, that completes the demonstration for selecting clusters, heads, changing the colours and pushing some of the findings and assemblies together. We do have some other videos that cover signet rings, um, pendants and some of the settings as well. You'll find these demonstrations under the headings of Assembler.